Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel, and in today's video I'll explain how you can set up Trello to organize your tasks and your projects for college or university. So I've been testing out a bunch of project slash task management systems, and I'm currently using two systems in parallel to organize for grad school, Trello and Todoist. Both of them are great, but really different. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you how I organize school using Trello. So Trello is a great app. I have a couple of videos on Trello basics and how I use it if you are interested in that. As I've said in other videos, Trello is incredibly versatile. Sometimes it feels so versatile that you don't even quite know how to get started, which is why it's nice to hear how someone else uses it for a similar purpose so that you don't have to start entirely from scratch. So I'm in grad school for the second time. This time I'm getting a master's in social work. I'm in a part-time partial distance learning program, and I'm taking three classes this semester. So because of this, my setup is gonna be a little simpler than it would be for those of you who are taking a full load. Um, but the information is still applicable. Again, if you're new to Trello, I recommend that you go back and watch my overview video to get a sense of what Trello is and how it differs from other organizational systems. Um, in my experience, college professors have to be pretty organized. You generally get a syllabus at the beginning of the semester where they have planned out the entire class for the entire semester, generally by week. When I get all of these syllabi, I take several hours to transfer all of this planning information into Trello. So I've created a board that I call grad school. I do not make a new one every semester. I just clear out all of the information from previous semesters by deleting or archiving it so that I can start fresh. So here is my more or less empty board. You can see it isn't entirely empty. That's because I do have a general info list and that carries over from semester to semester. My general info list contains general school information like the school year calendar, classes for my curriculum, links to important school websites, and a calendar for the semester with week numbers. The information contained here isn't school-wide and it doesn't necessarily change every semester. <clears throat> Next, I create a list called class info. So this is, and from every, every other list from here on out, is going to be specific to the current semester. I've created a card for each one of my classes and I've chosen a label and a color for each one. So for example, my disorders class is a label three and it is orange. So when I'm working with Trello for the browser, I can use a keyboard shortcut to add labels to cards. So just by hovering over this card and hitting the number three button, I can toggle this label on and off. Each of these cards is used like a note to store information about that class. So for example, again, in my disorders class, I have information about my professor, all of her contact information, um, the TA, the textbooks that are used for this class, the weight or the percentage assigned to each of the assignments, um, some of the names of the students in class, and I also include the syllabus as an attachment. It's a quick place to go to to locate all of the information that I think is important for each of my classes. The next list I have is for papers and projects. So each class has at least one major deliverable due for the semester. Some have more than one. So I create a card for each major assignment and I tag it with the correct class label. So you can see that I have one deliverable for my research class, one for disorders, and two for spirituality. Within the card, I assign a due date to the project, and then I put about as much information as I have on that project or paper. So I will also attach an instructions document if I have it. I may also start a task list that starts to break down what I need to do to uh, get started on this assignment. So next for each of my classes, I create a class weekly assignment list. So most of my professors have their classes planned out week by week in their syllabus. You have a fairly good idea of what reading is required, what assignments are due, and what projects you, you should be working on week by week. I so appreciate this level of detail and planning. I do have one professor who likes to spring things on us each week, and that is definitely not my preferred method. Okay, so you can see that for each week, I have a card that is labeled by class. So for example, again, for my disorders class, I have a card for each week with an orange label. For the week starting October 2nd, the card's title is gonna tell me what the topic of the class for the week is going to be. In this case, disruptive impulse control and behavior disorders. I love this class, honestly. <laughs> Within the card, I create a checklist with each of the things that I need to do this week. So I need to read chapter 10 of the Corcoran and Walsh book. I have to read uh, the chapter of the DSM-5 on conduct disorders. I have to read chapter seven of the LaCroix book. And 
Um, I have to submit a critical thinking discussion post and take an online quiz. So I create a card for each week for each of my classes. Again, this takes some time, but doing it all at once means that I don't have to do this administrative work every single week. <clears throat> okay, so that is one list for each of my classes with one card for each week. So after this, I have three more lists. Tasks for the week, today's tasks, and done. So these are my action lists. Um, as a note, I usually put the done list to the far left, which is totally against Trello and Kanban board convention. It's supposed to go to the right, but it works best there for me. So here's how I use this board. Each Monday, I take some time to plan out my entire school week. I open the weekly assignment card for each class for the week, and I look at all the tasks. Then I convert each of these tasks into a card. You can do this easily by clicking on the dots to the right of the task. So this card is going to be created, and then it is going to be added to the bottom of the list. So once I've created all the cards, I scroll down to the bottom of the list. I label each of these um, tasks with the correct class label. It's really fast to do this with the keyboard shortcut. And then I drag and drop each one over to the tasks for this week list. I do this for every one of my classes. Now, I check into my big projects and assignments, and I see if I need to move over any of those tasks to start working on it this week. Once I have all the cards of what I need to do for the week in my this week's list, I can start to plan out how I'm going to attack this work. So I'm going to drag and drop to reorganize the cards into the order in which I want to do them. Um, I'm going to, for the, for the cards that I want to do today, I'm going to move those over into my today's task list, and then I will start to work through them. As I complete each task, I will drag it over to my done list. So in addition to all this, I have added the calendar power up so that for the cards where I have um, assigned due dates, like for my big projects and papers, um, I can click on the calendar view to get a time-centric view of when they are due. It is also super easy to ask add new tasks as they arise. For example, for my discussion board posts, I almost always have to post an original submission, and then I have to respond back to the posts of a couple of my classmates. I'll add the task of responding to the others, and I might even assign it a due date. So Trello is easy to use, it is beautiful, and it works on lots of different platforms so that I can always access my assignments wherever I am. I love the ability to drag and drop to reorder my workflow th throughout the day and throughout the week. Let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.